Okay, so what's up everybody? Wanted to go ahead and share you guys a few ways that are really easy to customize uh, the home screen here on a Sony 4K TV set with the Android operating system. Um, you know, also some cool ways that you can customize the TV and I get asked a lot of questions about uh, how to properly set these things up and you know how can I hide or delete inputs etc. Um, if you want to see how the TV is turned into just a monitor if you'd like please refer to my video about Sony Pro Mode but um, uh, in the interim uh, I've just set this TV up just put it on the uh, just put it on the network here so uh, you're going to see some scrolling options on the TV set. You're going to see all sorts of ads, and <clears throat> you're going to see, you know, some uh, some commercials and some news and YouTube things, etc., on the TV set. But uh, we'll drill down here into the main menu, and we'll talk about uh, some things that you can do with the TV set to really uh, tailor them to uh, to the end user, to the to the use case. So. I've recently updated the firmware on my D-Series 75-inch uh, 4K TV, and so the menu uh, structure for the main uh, for the home menu is a little bit different. Uh, but you'll see options here for external inputs right off the bat. If you're going to use uh, the tuner in the TV set, this is where you would uh, you know screw in your old RF uh, connector from your antenna, uh, and then uh, use the tuner in the TV set to get some over-the-air broadcast. Uh, Depending on your area of the country, or uh, you know, so wherever you are, uh, there are lots of free channels out there and a lot of great, uh, you know, digital HD content that you can get uh, over the air for nothing. So uh, don't count that out uh, if you're a cable cutter or you're a cord cutter out there. Um, we'll look here at the external inputs first and foremost. Uh, the first option that you have up there at the top is to manage the inputs if you want to show or hide them. So this is where you're going to be able to disable or enable them uh, for you know visible in the menu so if we look here at the channels I am not use an off-air antenna so we're going to go ahead and hide that and then uh, the do you want to show video one the the analog input on the TV set nope I don't want to use that because I don't have a, uh, a VCR to hook up here or anything like that I don't have any component video uh, connectivity to the TV set so I'm going to hide those as well RVU is functionality for uh, the DirecTV service. So if uh, you're a DirecTV customer or you have DirecTV customers, if you're an integrator watching this video, uh, if you look at the RVU option here, again, that would be a way to turn the Sony TV set actually into a room client uh, for the uh, DirecTV uh, Genie Box. So uh, consult your local integrator, consult your local um, DirecTV uh, dealer to discuss how to uh, maybe turn your Sony TV set into a room client for your Genie if you have one. Uh, but I don't have that here at my house so we're going to go ahead and hide that. Um, and then down here at the option, uh, last option here is a screen mirroring option. So you can use the Wi-Fi Direct to the TV set to share your phone, share your tablet, share your PC screen uh, with the <clears throat> the television in your home wirelessly uh, again if you want to use that or not completely up to you but uh, for me I have lots of other ways to cast to the TV set so I'm not actually going to use that uh, one of the key ways to cast to the TV set is it's got Chromecast built in so I don't necessarily need uh, the Wi-Fi direct option to share my display however if you were using this in a place where maybe it's not on the internet could be a cool option for you to be able to wirelessly share uh, your monitor with uh, the display uh, in, or you know in an office setting maybe or even in a home setting. Um, so we've managed the inputs there as, or, <coughs> excuse me, as far as the ones we're going to show and the ones we're going to hide. Um, if we were going to control other devices with the Sony remote this is where you'd set up the IR blaster we're not doing that here. Uh, Bravia sync settings is how we uh, set up devices for control for HDMI so in my particular case, I'm using these features in, in my setup because um, everything is uh, local to the TV. So I can turn on one device and it'll automatically turn on the other TV, or excuse me, turn on the television and turn off uh, other devices that are on the system. So kind of a cool way to automate. If you're an integrator, uh, again, refer to my options for uh, pro mode 
Uh, you're probably doing audio and video switching outside the TV set and maybe only using one input on the TV. Again, you've seen here how you can hide inputs on the TV, so whether you need to use Pro Mode or not is, is really up to you. Um, so, and it'll list here the devices that we're actually seeing that are connected to the TV set. Uh, again, in my particular case, I have a PlayStation uh, and the uh, NVIDIA Shield uh, connect, uh, connected to the TV set. If I needed to add something else, I'd connect it to the TV and click the Enable button here, and then it would list it uh, on, the, uh, on the list. Um, and then, of course, if we wanted to control what the punch-through com commands do from the remote, uh, Sony remote to the other devices, that's where you'd uh, make that adjustment. So, hey, you know, do I want to you know, have any punch through commands? Do I want to just have normal stuff? Or do I want to have normal and all of the number keys uh, available to me? I think in this particular case, I'm going to go normal. Um, we back out of here. You can customize what the TV button does. So on the Sony factory remote that comes with the TV set, there's a button that says TV on it. Um, what do you want that button to do if you're using the factory remote? Uh, again, if you're an integrator, you're probably not going to use this option. But for me, uh, I have my cable box connected to HDMI 1. So when I press the TV button, I would expect the TV to come on, or what I consider the TV. So uh, that's what we're going to make the TV do there. Or that, well, that excuse me, that's what we're going to make the TV button do. Uh, and then last but not least is HDMI signal format. So this is a really critical one, especially if you're connecting third-party devices like uh, Apple TVs, NVIDIA Shields, of course Sony's 4K Blu-ray player, um, etc. There's a lot of 4K devices out there in the ecosystem. Sony PlayStation Pro, for example, uh, Xbox uh, One X, whatever the latest uh, Microsoft device is. They all have the capability to show UHD content. So you want to pay pretty particular attention uh, to this particular uh, menu right here. So if you're looking uh, at the inputs that we have available, you're going to see the option here for HDMI signal format. So you'll see in uh, quotations up there, enhanced format displays high quality HDMI signals. Select this option only if your device supports high quality HDMI for formats such as 4K, 60p 420, 10-bit 444, 422, and in parentheses it says HDR included. So there's a lot of uh, acronyms, numbers, semicolons, punctuation, etc. up there. What does all that stuff mean? Essentially, if you're connecting some of the latest generation products to your TV set, like the ones that I mentioned, Sony 4K Blu-ray player, uh, Apple TV 4K, Nvidia Shield, Roku, you name it, those devices, they are going to have enhanced uh, capabilities, so you're going to want to make sure that the inputs that you use on the TV uh, are the ones uh, that you enable those features on. So for me, HDMI 1 is standard format because, you know what, that's just my cable box. I don't need to worry about that. I know it's only HD. HDMI 2, however, is where I have my NVIDIA Shield connected, which is capable of higher bit rates, uh, 4K, UHD, HDR, Dolby Vision, etc., those are the inputs that I'm going to want to make sure that I uh, connect uh, to the TV set so I can get the latest and greatest. When I pick that option, the TV is going to prompt me now, uh, are you actually going to do that? Say yes. Reason being is it puts the TV in a higher power state uh, and it just requires the, the, uh, the television to be rebooted so that it can actually uh, perform that option and turn back on in that higher power profile. So. We'll see the TV reboot here, power cycle for us. Uh, we'll see the, the Android screen pop up and, you know, uh, hopefully shouldn't be too painful here as far as the reboot goes. Uh, as this is a one take, one shot video, so I have to uh, stretch a little bit uh, as, the, as the TV reboots. Um, you know, I can't really say enough about the options in these TV sets. Thankfully, the uh, the, the menu is going to come back here to life for me quick enough so I don't have to spend too much. Um, but uh, there's so much customization that you can utilize and do with these TV sets to, to really give uh, a quite spectacular uh, end user experience uh, you know, in the home regardless of the, of the content that you watch. So go back to the home menu button here and we'll look and see 
Uh, of course, we've got to wait for the menu to populate a little bit here. Uh, you'll notice that uh, I'm connected hardwire here. Uh, if we had a Wi-Fi signal or if I was using Wi-Fi, uh, that would be a different icon and uh, you know would list my uh, network name. But um, you know some cool indicators as to you know at a glance what the TV's up to. Um, now, if we go back to external inputs uh, and we want to look at enhanced signal format for any of the other inputs. Um, you know, we can do that. I don't have anything on HDMI 3 and HDMI 4 is the audio return channel uh, input on the TV set. So if you guys uh, or anybody out there is using the sound bar uh, where they want to utilize the apps on the TV set uh, but send that audio high quality back to an AV receiver, that's the input that I recommend that you use on our TV sets. Um, depending on the model, uh, Different inputs are going to perform at uh, different levels. So uh, on the current generation TVs that I see, the current series TV sets, uh, usually HDMI 2 and HDMI 3 are the ideal inputs to use uh, for uh, making these adjustments. Uh, in this particular case with this model, 2, 3, and 4 seem to be fine for HDR. I haven't played around with it on uh, HDMI 1, but again, uh, if you want to change uh, the connectivity on the TV set so that it's going to work with these devices this is a really really critical uh, setting here. This is a really critical option. Uh, you'll notice that we're on about the 10 minute mark or so here even including uh, the boots and resets so this is not you know just slam it in there and get it done if you're an integrator out there uh, this is uh, you know this is time that you need to account for uh, for your customers and, you know it's not just slap it in there this you know they are pretty sophisticated and can do a lot of things and I know again if you're an end user out there hopefully uh, this video kind of gives you some tools to navigate what the TV can do and uh, you know some things to make your experience with the TV a little bit better. Um, you know picture and display this is where you're going to get in here and be able to adjust you know screen size and uh, make picture adjustments and brightness. I'll probably make another video about uh, what those settings are all about. Uh, your sound menu here, this is where you're going to make adjustments to the TV set. Um, you can, of course, disable the speakers on the TV and use an external audio system. Uh, you can prioritize devices uh, with Bravia Sync. Uh, you can use the headphone output here to do various things. This is a really cool option for what the headphone can do. Uh, the headphone output can do, excuse me, you can use it uh, as a line out just to feed an audio system. Uh, either in a fixed mode or a variable mode, or uh, maybe you've got a uh, you know a sound bar connected and you want to use the audio output on the TV for the subwoofer. Uh, definitely a cool way to to get a little extra audio performance, a little bit of extra kick uh, out of the outputs of our TV sets. So if you didn't know about that feature, it's really cool. Uh, another cool thing about the headphone link uh, is you can connect Bluetooth headphones to our TV sets, or um, you can also um, have the speakers on in the TV and use a set of uh, wired headphones or maybe a wireless transmitter uh, using that output so that uh, both of the people that are uh, trying to watch TV can listen to and hear the audio on the TV in acceptable levels. So that's a really cool uh, capability of the TV set. One thing I am going to disable here is the sounds on the TV because I don't like those beeps and maybe a lot of people don't either. Uh, and of course we care about uh, how the TV on an, the TV sound is in a TV set, so uh, there actually is a different voicing setting uh, for the position of the TV. So um, you know, whether it's on a tabletop stand, it's going to sound one way versus if it's mounted on the wall, there actually is an option to prioritize the best audio uh, possible there. Um, and last but not least, as far as performance goes, for me, I just want the LED to respond. Uh, when I press the button, so you'll notice here that you could have it on all the time, uh, which is how it comes out of the box, just to sort of highlight that it's a Sony, which is a really cool uh, option. Again, you can have it optimized according to ambient light. Uh, you can dim it to a certain level. You can completely turn it all off, but for me, I like it just as a simple response on the TV set so that when I <coughs> send a command to the TV set or press the button, there's a response on the TV to tell me that I got it. Uh, if we look in the power menu here, uh, this is where you can adjust some settings in the TV set uh, for what the TV is going to do standby wise. If you're an integrator out there, this is a really 
critical setting to pay attention to if you're using a control system. Uh, go to the power saving option or the eco menu here and you want to disable the idle TV standby. This will keep the TV from falling asleep uh, and not being able to recover for IP commands or uh, serial commands, etc. So this is a great way to make sure that the TV is in a higher power state when it's in standby. And I don't want the TV shutting off automatically, so I'm going to disable that feature. Uh, then we get in here to apps. So this is where you can uh, look at the system apps and app permissions. Um, you know, you can disable things or notifications from specific apps. So again, if you're getting a notification from Samba, you could drill down here in the menu. And I do not recommend disabling the app, but you can completely mute all of the um, notifications from it. So we'll just scroll down here a little bit. And they're not really in alphabetical order, so I'm going to do my best uh, to find it here. But we'll scroll down here. Let's we'll see if we can find Samba. There it is. And we don't want to force stop it or disable it, but we can disable the notifications from it. So again, another layer of ways to defeat any kind of messaging or anything that might be popping up on the screen. Um, screen saver isn't really a, a critical option. This is where you can, uh, you know, if you, again, if you want to put the TV to sleep or have a backdrop pop up as sort of like electronic art, Kind of a nice feature, but not something that you really need to worry about settings-wise. Uh, storage and reset. Again, this is where you can do a factory data reset on the TV. So maybe you're just having problems with it, or the settings aren't right, or you know maybe you're struggling a little bit with uh, with the with some setting on the TV set. You can always go back and wipe it all out. Maybe you bought it for a little while and you're going to give it to somebody else, and they want to put all their information into it. Again, you could wipe the TV completely out by using this uh, factory data reset option. Uh, it'll walk you back through the setup, uh, setup steps. And then you can get in here to about. And again, this is where you're going to see the device name. You can see what's going on with serial numbers and other information. The Android uh, version that you're running on the TV set. Uh, all of the, uh, just like your about computer option, if you will. Um, you can also go here and perform uh, software update checks uh, on the TV set and again this is a great uh, way to keep your TV and the apps up to date uh, if you're using them on the TV set. If you are not, if you're using a third party device such as a Blu-ray player or Apple TV or other things, other ways to stream to the TV set, again check out my video on Sony Pro Mode for you can uh, really make this TV lock down and just be a monitor and use those other devices to feed uh, content to the TV set but again um, you can do a lot of those kinds of things in the regular uh, consumer menu here. Just uh, again, takes uh, doesn't take anybody with any special skill set to undo the things that you've done. Um, back out of this menu here, and then as you drill down deeper here, uh, you can get into the home network menu of the TV set. Again, it's a smart TV set, so there's a lot of things that it can do over the network in your home. If you're using third-party apps or you're using a third-party control system, it's really critical that uh, you use the turn on the remote start feature here and then uh, also go into the home network menu and enable the IP control feature on your TV set. And again, it will um, make it so that the TV is ready to accept commands uh, over Wi-Fi or over the wired internet uh, connection in your house through a control system, etc. Um, and then you can really drill down deep if you want and uh, use you know um, IPv6 uh, certification and set up a WPS pin. Again, TV is a smart device, so it's going to have some pretty serious network uh, connectivity options. It's where you're going to be able to set up your Google Cast, Bluetooth settings, where you can pair a set of Bluetooth headphones to the TV. Again, I think I'll make a separate video about all this other stuff. But this is really uh, the the main things that I would do if you're taking the TV out of the box. If you are using the apps and the stuff on the TV set and you look here at the home screen you can customize the feed and this is a really uh, common question that I get a lot. How can I tailor what that looks like to be not so hodgepodge and maybe my customers are sensitive about uh, 
the, the commercials that are popping up on screen for, for whatever reason, uh, there's a way to, to hide all of that stuff. So uh, at the very top, you can hide uh, the ads and the, the, the setup options and crackle, etc., cetera, uh, from ever being able to be visible. Uh, it, you'll see a spinning wheel on the screen that says preparing recommendations, but if you disable all of these options, it will, um, you know, you won't see that feed. I think the only one that I haven't been able to uh, to get rid of maybe is the program guide option, but uh, we'll see when, when we turn the main menu back on here after we hide uh, all these other options here. You know, a lot of people would call this bloat. Uh, you know, again, these are just news feeds and uh, things that are associated with the, you know, the smart features on the TV set, but Google and Sony give you the options here to be able to hide all that stuff. Um, now, if we look in the apps and games rows, uh, right out of the box, it will automatically sort it by the things that you're using all the time. So it cues those uh, apps, etc., to the front. However, maybe that's not what you want to do. Maybe you want it to be a consistent, uh, you know, a consistent uh, interaction or a consistent experience every time uh, that you touch that, or every time you interact with the main menu if you're if you're doing so. So you can go here to reorder the apps row. And then you can actually get in here and pick where you want the apps to appear. Maybe I didn't press the right button. I probably didn't press the right button because I just launched YouTube. Pardon me here. Let's go back. User error, right? Scroll back down. Go to settings. Scroll down here to where it says home screen. And we can order the reorder the apps. There we go. Now you can pick where you'd like the apps to appear uh, in line. So if you had downloaded Netflix, if you had downloaded uh, some of those other things, uh, they would appear here in the list. I'm not using uh, the apps on my TV set. I'm using... Uh, the, the Shield device to actually stream, but again, uh, you'd have to download things from the Play Store and then uh, you'd be able to arrange the apps that you have downloaded to the TV set. So you could imagine that you'd have uh, probably Netflix, Amazon, Vudu, etc. listed there. And uh, again, you can have them light out any way that you want. Um, and then if we go back here to the settings menu, uh, once we get things set, you're going to have to pick it again. So it's, I mean, it's kind of a little bit of back and forth, uh, but you can get there. So we'll pick home screen again, go back to apps and games. Uh, then we can reorder the games rows. And if, again, if we had some other games other than Asphalt Nitro uh, connected uh, or available to us on the TV set, then we could uh, arrange where we'd like to have those go as well. Um, so hopefully you find this uh, little video uh, helpful. Um, if you, if you have some questions, please leave them in the comments below and uh, have a good day.